you're a bike spotter, there's no better opportunity than the Eroica Britannia for feasting your eyes on rare and collectible bikes. We went to the Taster event at Goodwood, which was rammed with all kinds of classic vintage and historic bikes. In fact, there was so much beautiful steel on display that it was hard to choose a best in show, so we've chosen our favourite seven. Giuseppe Cerroni won the World Championships at Goodwood in 1982 on a Colnago almost identical to this one. The bike's equipped with a period correct Campagnolo Super Record group set, complete with a pantograph chainring and Super Record pedals. Its owner, Ron Dubash, had owned the chain set, seat pin, and rear derailleur since 1982, but had to source the new old stock or NOS levers and said they cost a small fortune. The Concours saddle is synonymous with Cerroni's win and there was even a rumour that he was paid by San Marco in saddles because the following year there was a massive glut of Concours available, very heavily discounted, dumped into the market without explanation. The wheels are the only nod to practicality. Cerrone would have used tubular wheels and Clement Criterium silk tubs, but these clincher wheels and tan wall tyres still look the part. It's finished off with original white 1980s Ambrosio bike ribbon, which is now very rare. This bike is so period correct that it even has Campagnolo grease oozing out of the hub. The eccentric but classic flying gate design allowed a shortened wheelbase for more efficient climbing, but flying gates were used for all cycling disciplines, including time trialling. With a 94cm wheelbase, clearance is really minimal and there's a lot of toe overlap but it really does climb fantastically well according to its owner and it's great on gravel roads too with bigger tyres. This model is one of the first Trevor Jarvis made after he revived the original design and restarted production in 1979 and it was built as a time trial bike. The early TJ flying gates had a hollow down tube but later they were all capped. The cork here is a neat and humorous way of plugging it. The group set is all Campagnolo record with C record track pedals which are slightly wider. It has super record hubs with Weinmann hollow rims. It has a very bling Cinelli stem and the original saddle. The bike's owner is a big fan of Tom Simpson and says this badge was originally going to be on a Simpson Ranger bike. It's an homage to a well-loved character. This classic British handmade women's frame was discovered at a North London car boot sale and bought for 75 pounds. It was purple and fitted with mismatched Japanese components. It was renovated and resprayed for the 2012 Eroica in Italy using original Ernie Clements transfers. It has Oscar egg lugs and an early Ernie Clements head badge. The build was kept as original as possible with beautiful 1950s British hubs that actually came with it. It's a blue mill on the front and an air light on the back. It has a Campagnolo Grand Sport chain set and rear derailleur and a GB bar and stem. The brakes have been modified for smaller women's hands. The bike's owner, Terry Garrett, hasn't been able to find out any of the bike's history, even though she went to see Ernie Clement's son, who has a bike shop near Ledbury. Even Falcon, who Ernie Clement's designed frames for, didn't have records going back that far, but that doesn't take away anything from the unique style of this bike. Westfield was developed for the American Airborne Infantry along the lines of the BSA Parabike, but when the Americans joined the war in 1941, they'd already been developing the Jeep and didn't take up the offer of the bicycle, which means this one's super rare. This was the original version called 92L for lightweight, but after they got damaged in jumps in trials, Westfield made a beefier version, a 92H for heavyweight. This lightweight L version weighs 50 pounds, so the H must have been very beefy indeed. The bike breaks in half and stows and the handlebars fold. The idea was that it would go down on two lots of kit in two halves and would be ridden ahead for reconnaissance. Its owner says it rides surprisingly well for an 81-year-old bicycle, but uphills are pretty tough and coming down, the coaster brake is less than inspiring. Apart from the tyres, it's all original, right down to the horsehair mat and leatherette saddle. The Rally Record Ace, or RRA, 
was the ultimate post-war lightweight, as racing bikes used to be known. Reg Harris won his medals at the 1948 Olympics on a works RRA, and Ray Booty did his sub four hour 100 miles in 1956 on one too. It was the first rally bike to be made from Reynolds 531 and was very expensive at the time. The components were all specifically made for the RRA. There are little herons everywhere. The stem even matches the lugs on the frame. The alloy wing nuts are specific to the RRA. This bike belonged to owner Simon Head's father, who rode fixed wheel with classic British hardened hubs. They were the best you could buy. In this setup, it has a four speed Sturmey Archer hub on the rear, but it has the original hardened bacon slicer front. The paint was restored, but the transfers are not reproductions. They are original rally transfers applied by varnish, and the gold is much more vivid on the real transfers. All of the components are original. The owner's father had greased them, wrapped them in newspaper and stored them in a tea chest. If any bike epitomizes the Eroica Britannia, it's gotta be this one. You do see a lot of Bianchis at the Eroica, but not many of them are 999 Bianchis. All Bianchi Pro Team bikes made between 1958 and 1968 have a frame number that starts with 999. Bianchi only made 400 team bikes in that time, so a 999 Bianchi is something very special. Unlike Rally's SPDU, who made bikes for everyone, Bianchi's Reparto Corse was strictly for team bikes. This one was made by Giuseppe Drali, who is the oldest frame builder still alive in Italy. He's 95. And it's built up with Campagnolo record exactly as it would have been with universal brake sets that the team would have used. These have quick release hangers so that changing cables is much faster they can just be torn out. It has the first Cinelli aluminium handlebar that the company ever made, again from 1965. The team would have ridden tubulars, but the Mavic Module E rims from the 1960s look just like tubs. It weighs 24 pounds and its owner, Bob Johnson, says the ride quality is fantastic. This bike really is the real deal. Tapon was a French company based in Angoulême. All that's known about them is that they made a car in about 1902 and this bike in 1905. The frame is surprisingly modern. It's made from fillet braid steel tubing with a single lug for the head tube. It's got a very distinctive fork crown that looks like the ones ridden in the 1905 Tour de France. There are no gears, it has a fixed wheel and its owner Ben Stevens, who rode it 300 miles from Bakewell to Goodwood, used a 72 inch gear. The bike literally came out of a museum and hadn't been used for years, so all it needed was a new set of wooden wheels. Now these are more modern wooden wheels. The original ones had mostly disintegrated with woodworm. The bar and stem are probably original, and it also has an early flint catcher, which is also original. It has just one rear brake with modern brake pads, which still get worn down very quickly. Using the original saddle might have been a mistake. Some of the rivets are sticking out and kept ripping Stevens' trousers. Unsurprisingly, he said he found it to be the most uncomfortable saddle he'd ever ridden, but that the bike itself was surprisingly fast. No wonder if you can't sit down on the saddle. So those are our favourite bikes from this year's Eroica Britannia. Let us know in the comments section underneath which one was your favourite, and as always, please like and subscribe to the Cycling Weekly YouTube channel.